Welcome back. In previous videos, we looked at the basics of electrolysis, examples of the electrolysis of molten ionic substances, and examples of the electrolysis of aqueous substances. So in the next few videos, we'll start taking a look at how we can apply some of this knowledge to understand the processes of electrolysis in industry. I will start now by looking at the process of the purification of copper. So copper is um, an extremely important metal because of its high electrical conductivity. So it's, it's a really good conductor of electricity, so it's used in everything from electrical appliances to computers to electronic products. So anything that involves electricity around you, you're more, than, you're more likely than not to find um, copper in it. The copper that's dug up from the ground is called chalcopyrite. And I'll just write formula here. And what's done is usually the chalcopyrite is combusted with silicon oxide to form copper sulfate. Copper sulfide, I beg your pardon. And this is then further oxidized to blister copper. which contains all sorts of impurities. So the blister copper can't yet be used. It needs to be purified to remove um, impurities in it, which might contain gold and iron, which can be then further used for their other useful purposes. So it turns out that electrolysis is a great way to purify copper. And we'll see why in a minute. So let's jump right into the process um, of purifying copper so once again we'll set up our beaker here and in it I'll put two electrodes but this time instead of using the inert carbon electrodes I'm gonna take my block of in pure copper and connect it to the positive end of the battery while at the negative end the cathode I'll put a thin piece of pure copper so let's just make sure that this is completely submerged This piece of impure copper, and I have a thin sheet of pure copper on the cathode. And now we will fill the beaker with our solution of copper sulfate copper sulfate aqueous so there you have the basic setup for the purification of copper our goal is to take this block of impure copper and translate it into a block of pure copper so let's take a look at what we have in our solution the copper sulfate will dissociate into copper ions as well as sulfate ions and once again 
we also have water slightly dissociative into hydrogen and hydroxide ions. So the positive ions will be attracted to the cathode since it is positive. Oops, it's negative, it's positive. So the positive ions will be attracted to the cathode, so I will write them below the cathode, CO2 plus, H plus, and the negative ions will be attracted to the anode because the negatives will be attracted to the positives, so I get sulfate and hydroxide. So I now have electrons flowing down into this sheet of pure copper here from the negative terminal of the cell. And remember, I can only choose either the copper or the hydrogen to receive this electron. In order to choose between copper and hydrogen, we will take a look once again at the reactivity series. So we have copper here and hydrogen here. And just to remind you, this series is drawn from the most reactive species down to the least reactive species. And it will be the less reactive species that will be discharged. And since copper is less reactive than hydrogen, copper will be discharged. So I will now circle copper to indicate that it is the species that will be discharged. So let's go ahead now and write the half equation for what's happening at the cathode. So I will have positive copper ions receiving two electrons from the negative terminal of the battery, two electrons because we need to um, neutralize the two positive charges on the copper to form pure solid copper. So this pure copper will stick to the thin sheet of pure copper and as time goes on the layers will start building up on this copper cathode and I'll have more and more pure copper being deposited here. Now let's take a look at what happens at the anode. The situation at the anode is slightly more complicated than at the cathode because there are now three species that can supply electrons to be sent back to the cell. So I need a chemical reaction here to happen to supply electrons back to the cell. In addition to either the sulfate or the hydroxide ions being able to supply electrons to the cell, I can also have a situation where the copper will dissolve in a solution and give electrons back to the cell. First, let's compare the sulfate ions and hydroxide ions to find out which one will be the favorite one to give up its electrons. And we'll do that by taking a look at the reactivity series once again. So I have my sulfate ions here and the hydroxide ions. And as you can see, the hydroxide ions are less reactive than the sulfate ions. And hence, the hydroxide ions would be favored to give up its electrons if you compare these two species. So let's write the half reaction for the hydroxide ions giving up its electrons. So I'm now at the anode. The hydroxide ions gives up electrons to form water. So four hydroxide ions will give up four electrons to form an oxygen and two water. That is one possibility. The other possibility is that since the electrode is now no longer inert, 
it can actually dissolve in a solution. So I can get a situation where the copper, the solid copper, from this block of impure copper, will give up its electrons, two of its electrons in fact, to form a copper ion. And this copper ion will go into the solution. The question is then, which of these reactions will be the favored one to give up its electrons to the cells? We had learned how to compare ions of the same charge to find out their favorability of being discharged. These ions are positive ions and these ions are negative ions. But now I have a situation of comparing a negative species with a positive species. Well, how do we do that? We need to look at a more complete table, which is actually a superset of what I've shown you here. And we won't be going into detail into that table now, but just for your information, it is called the standard electrode potentials. And I will be doing a more advanced video on electrolysis at a future date. But for the moment, we just need to accept that the second equation is the one that is more likely to occur than the first equation. So at the anode, what will happen is the copper will dissolve in the solution and give up its electrons. So this is so this reaction is favored over this reaction. So I'll take this reaction away since it will not happen. So if we now look at the reactions at the anode and at the cathode, we see that at the anode, the copper will dissolve to form copper ions, giving up two electrons back to the cell. And at the cathode, two electrons will be received by the copper ions to deposit pure copper at the cathode. As the copper dissolves at the anode, impurities will fall away from the impure anode and gather at the bottom of the beaker. So for every copper ion that is deposited onto the cathode, a new copper ion is dissolved from the anode to replenish that copper ion that was lost. Hence, the concentration of copper ions in the solution never changes as long as we have a supply of copper from the impure anode. Hence, the color of my solution will remain blue at the same intensity. Now, in the last video, we had looked at the electrolysis of copper sulfate using inert electrodes. While well, in this case, we're electrolyzing copper sulfate using non-inert electrodes. So to conclude, I would like to look at the differences and similarities between the electrolysis of copper sulfate using inert electrodes and, as in this case, using non-inert electrodes. anode and the cathode. So we see here that using the non-inert electrodes at the anode the copper dissolves in the solution and at the cathode the copper is deposited If you recall, for the case of the inert electrodes, we also had copper solid forming. But it is not actually deposited at the electrode because it doesn't stick to carbon, so it just fell down to the bottom of the beaker. Well, at the anode, we found that oxygen gas formed. So that is the difference of the electrolysis of copper sulfate using inert electrodes and non-inert electrodes.
In the next video, we'll look at another application of electrolysis, one where we electroplate a metal to make it look nice and prevent it from corroding.